there's a great film. It's a science fiction film. And you know that I'm a filmmaker, and so is Alan, so our inspiration often comes from cinema. It uh, takes place in the future on Mars. It's called Total Recall. It stars a great Republican governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he's the hero who has to go to Mars to liberate the privatized air. Uh, so that the people can breathe again and that air will be part of the commons. Um, and uh, little did he know that he was going to be involved in, in, uh, in our book. <laughs> but uh, when we started hearing stories about water privatization that were taking place around the United States, we felt it was a little bit like Total Recall. It was a little science fiction. We were hearing about uh, people who wanted to drag um, the polar ice caps down to the Middle East and sell them for a profit. Um, we were hearing about people who wanted to take tankers to the Great Lakes and ship all that water over to Asia. Uh, in Northern California, where we live, we heard a story about one guy who wanted to put a bunch of pipes up the Gualala River in Mendocino County suck the rivers dry and take that water down to Southern California for sale to uh, developers who wanted to build more housing tracts in uh, San Diego area. Now these stories are kind of proliferating and we heard more and more about them in the United States and then we started hearing <coughs> about water wars, the new water wars of the 20th, 21st century. Um, and what made these water wars different than water wars of the past was that it wasn't a country against another country, but it was citizens and individuals and community groups against giant mega corporations. This was a fundamental new shift that was taking place in these water wars that was giving them kind of a science fiction quality. The question is whether there's a kind of ideological campaign to discredit uh, public water systems. Um, and um, uh, the answer is yes. It comes from a bunch of different streams. Um, bottled water is certainly one. Uh, and uh, it's quite un bottled water companies deny that their advertising suggests that uh, bottled water is better and purer and uh, safer than tap water. Um, but the, uh, there's a kind of imbalance that <coughs> exists because you have um, uh, Aquafina or Dasani ads that are saying that have you know mountains on uh, and uh, snow-topped mountains on the on the uh, label, and that say our water is pure. <laughs> our water, I mean, you start getting you know our water is safe. Our water, and the with the implication always that tap water is not, and um, that's really all you have to say because who's advertising? for tap water. What is the uh, public relations and advertising budget for a public uh, agency providing water? So you don't even have to say all that much. Uh, what we found is that a lot of uh, public water uh, agencies and uh, people who provide this as a public service, I mean, they feel like they're public servants, really get upset about this. And um, we had one, there was one situation where we heard where Cleveland uh, had a collision with Fiji water. Uh, Fiji is, is uh, perhaps one of the most carbon crazy waters you can imagine, you know, 7,000 miles from the island of Fiji in a, in a plastic bottle for you to get a whiff of the air currents of the Pacific. And uh, the end of their ads said, uh, it's pure, you know, it's wonderful, it's not bottled in Cleveland. Woo! So the <laughs> Cleveland Water Department really took umbrage at this. And their response was um, that uh, they tested Fiji water. And they found that the level of arsenic in Fiji water was much higher than would be allowed in tap water <coughs> in the city of Cleveland. And following that, a local TV station started doing, okay, let's do some taste tests. So they went around the city with unmarked glasses of Fiji water and tap water. And uh, in the large majority of cases, people preferred Cleveland tap water to the Fiji water. So, you know, I mean, there is this kind of illusion that is, that is created. That's one, that's one stream. The other thing, the other element of this, though, is, is one that is, that is real. 
we do face a series of water crises, and there is a question about whether or not there's going to be enough money coming from the federal government or through our tax systems or our local communities to be able to keep our public, these, this great public infrastructure that has been built to keep it current, to keep it up to regulations, to keep it up to the new challenges of industrial and agricultural pollutants that are being dumped constantly in our water. And that means that there has to be more investment. And the administration, the uh, President Nero, as we call him, uh, <laughs> is uh, systematically denying um, local government and state government the funds to update their water services as a way to, uh, as Deborah was saying, as a prod to privatization. Um, there's going to be hundreds of billions of dollars that we'll need to invest in our water. And people in the United States have constantly shown by their votes and by their actions that clean water is a top priority. Um, a, um, uh, a Republican pollster named Frank Luntz um, recently uh, did a poll about federal money support for water and um, uh, people, whether people would support more money going into um, uh, clean water funding, and found that 86 percent of those he polled supported it. And he told this to a very reactionary at that time Senate Environment Committee. And he said, uh, this uh, enormous uh, majority um, went across political lines, went across regional lines, went across ethnic and racial lines. Um, that he had never seen such a consensus on any issue in his 20 years of polling. So there is enormous pressure from below um, on this issue, and it's something which there's a great deal of potential and opportunity <coughs> for water to be kind of the line in the sand against the privatization and the destruction of our public services. Um, one of the, th I'll give you an example in, in, in California um, right now. Um, there is a, a growing movement of people f to reform the agricultural system. I mean, I think this is happening across the, across the country, but uh, following a little bit in California, uh, where we have industrial agriculture, heavily uh, pesticides, enormous uh, farms. Uh, it's, there, it's a sort of financial agriculture. And um, the um, uh, agribusiness has been supporting privatization of water. Uh, in urban areas. Now, you know, why is that an important, uh, an important thing? Um, because I, I, I think that what's, what, what it, this is about is that if you're able to control your water services uh, and also your water supply or agricultural uh, rural water supplies, then it's going to be very hard to change the nature of farming. Right now, across California, I think in many other states this is true as well, there are irrigation districts for, for farms. They're very often controlled, as they are in many of the irrigation districts in California, by one vote for one dollar of agricultural output. That means that large farmers completely control the water use in agricultural areas, in rural areas, in irrigation uh, systems. So, if you're going to actually deal with privatization, both in rural and agricultural areas and in urban areas, um, you, you, uh, if you're going to deal with changing the food system, you have to gain a, a, a bit of control over your water. Our big example now is uh, ethanol, um, in which uh, uh, they're expecting, because of ethanol, that there'll be 10 million more acres of corn planted this year. Um, that is not only a question of uh, the atrazine and other pesticides that are then dumped on the land, but also, and very few people think about this connection, where is the water going to come from? Corn uses a great deal of water, much more than the, many of the alternative crops, and uh, that's going to be another, uh, another part of this connection. Water, uh, agri agriculture and food uh, <coughs> is 70 percent of our water goes to that area, about 20 percent to industry and 10 percent to our to our use in, in urban areas. So the two are really connected. You can't deal with the food situation without also sort of engaging the water situation. Well, I mean, in a way, the question, it's, it's a perfect ending for, for what we're talking about, because uh, this, is, this is the project, is how do we um, recreate and improve the public's, you know, we need to work on the public sector, which is really, um, 
uh, needs our help. And what it's about is this question that we've all been talking about a little bit tonight is democracy. It's it's about really getting involved. And it means that, you know, if we, if we want our good water system, we have to go out there and say we want our good, you know.